Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. Y'all, this is my show. I like this show. Y'all know that this is my favorite franchise of the Housewives because it's just new, it's different, it's interesting, it's fascinating. The the format is fresh. Um, I feel like with the regular Housewives, we get the same old, same old. You know, we get a formula that we've known and loved to expect. But with this, it's kind of like Big Brother style. We have all of the all-stars coming from different cities to live together in one house for 10 days, seven episodes. The drama ensues. We hear about stories that we've never heard before. They get to break the fourth wall. They get to talk about being a housewife. It's like actually real, right? To me, this is more real than the regular Real Housewives, which is why I just, I love it so much. So if you guys don't have Peacock, I would get it, like, when I originally got Peacock, I got it just for this show, and it's worth it for me. I love this show. Um, But yeah, in this particular season, they're going to be at the Berkshires, the Berkshires. And Eva was in the confessional talking about some, hey, Siri, where the f is the Berkshires? And that's my Siri going off, child. Because we don't know. Apparently, it's in Massachusetts. Um, You know, uh... They're going to be staying at the Bluestone Manor, which is a beautiful estate. I believe it's Dorinda Medley's second home. Um, Dorinda's on the show, of course. And um, it's it's a beautiful place. Like, it's kind of creepy and mysterious, but it's also very quiet. It's quaint. It's in a pocket of Massachusetts. It's beautiful, beautiful lawn, beautiful gowns. The house is very blue. I see why they call it Blue Manor, because inside is very blue. They have a fish room. The design and the decor is very eccentric. Um... A lot of velvety fabric, textiles, and stuff like that. I like the house. The house is interesting. It's definitely a vibe. And it's very different from Turks and Caicos. Okay? Very different from Turks and Caicos. Um, but speaking of that show, y'all, I was very disappointed in the theme song. Why was the theme song so bad? Why was the theme song so basic? Like, y'all started us off with... Housewives in the island. And then y'all gonna give us this basic instrumental, like, it just kind of felt like they got lazy. And I don't know if this is because it's the ex-wives club. And I think I forgot to say that this is the ex-wives club, which basically means they ain't on the show no more. Okay. Um, and I don't think any of them are married, except for maybe Tamra Judge, I believe. Um, Eva's married. And then I don't really know about the other ones. Oh, Taylor Armstrong remarried. So, yeah, we have some married folks, but it's the ex-wives clubs because they're ex-real housewives, right? Um, but, yeah, I was just so disappointed in that theme song. They could have came up with something a little bit different. Like, when I think of the Berkshires, the Berkshires, Massachusetts, New England, which I've never been to. I think the closest I've been to New England is Jersey or New York. But um, when I think of New England, I think of a violin. I want a violin playing in the background. What's that damn Christmas song? Chestnuts roasting. Like something slow and sexy. And then the uh, lyrics could have been like, Housewives uh, <laughs> in the manor. It's blue, and they're all cuckoo. Something. You could have gave us something. What's wrong with the Bob? Something. Everything was wrong with that boring ass theme song. But anyways, on this uh, season of Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip, we have the ladies from Atlanta, Phaedra and Eva Marcel. We have the ladies from Beverly Hills, Taylor Armstrong and Brandy Glanville. And then we have the ladies from OC, Tamara and Vicky. And then we have uh, Dorinda and Jill Zarin from New York City. Now, just to give you guys a quick rundown, um, Jill Zarin, I, I, I used to watch New York City a little bit back in the day. So Jill Zarin, I have a pretty, pretty positive outlook on her, but, you know, not really that much of an opinion. Dorinda... I can tell by social media, I never watched New York City when she was on there, but I can tell by social media that she was a huge fan favorite. So I'm excited to get to know her. She seems very nice. And of course, since she's hosting the ladies at her second home, she kind of takes this role as like the matriarch or the mother hen, the mother goose of the group, even though they all about the same damn age. Okay, 50, 60 years old. Um, but yeah, it's not an age thing. 
But since it's her home, she's hosting. She's like the mother goose. Um, Tamara and Vicky, I've never liked. I've never liked Tamara or Vicky. I feel like they're both desperate. I feel like they're both thirsty. I feel like they're both dramatic for no reason. I'm not really a big fan of um, these two. They remind me of Pinky and the Brain. Just two peas in a pot that we just don't appreciate. Um, you know, Tamara is the brain. She has a bit more of a level-headed personality. Still a little bit out there, but she's more level-headed. She has a brain. Like, she she thinks logically. Versus Vicky, who thinks very emotionally. She's very emotional. And Vicky, throughout this episode, got on my damn nerve. Okay, sis was jumping on my very last nerve that I had on this beautiful Thursday. After Oh, my God, it's Thursday already. So, yeah. Vicky's very emotional, and when she first stepped onto the scene, as far as the first episode goes of Ultimate Girls Trip, she was very just, like, complaining, complaining about everything. She was like, this mansion is creepy, and what's in Massachusetts, and I don't like Massachusetts. Where's the grocery store? What does Dorinda do out here? Where's the, um, where, where, where's the, um, the, the grocery store? Where's the Target? Where's the Home Goods? Where's the Marshalls? Where's the teacher? It doesn't matter. Did you come on vacation to go to Marshalls? Did you come to Massachusetts to go to the grocery store? Vicky is annoying. She was complaining the whole time and she's passing it off like, oh, I'm just sad. I'm depressed because my fiance just uh, broke up with me. And I'm like, sis, like you really do know how to pick them, don't you? I think her first husband only had one eye. OK, he was walking around OC like this. Um... You know, no tea, no shade. No, no offense. That's not an ableist statement or anything like that. It's just the truth. He was walking around with one eye. Hey, Vicky. Um, I think the second fiance or boyfriend came up with this whole elaborate story slash lie that he had cancer. I mean, a grown ass man that fakes that he has cancer. It's the the Anna Delvey story for me. It's the Anna Delvey complex for me. Just trying to fake this whole life to get where you need to go in life. It's disgusting. Or is it smart? Is it commendable and respectable or is it disgusting? Well, in this case, it's disgusting because you're pretending to have cancer, which is very serious. And there are actually people out here dying of it. Like how insensitive. And then I think this latest guy, and I don't know if this is the same guy that got the cancer, but he was staying in her second home in Mexico. Vicky's second home in Mexico, this fiance was staying in the home in Mexico without her while she stayed in California living off her in her house and then gonna break up with a girl where they do that at Vicky you have really bad taste in men okay and at the age of 59 60 I hope to God I am not dealing with ain't shit at the age of 60 if I'm dealing with relationship problems at 60 Jesus, take the will. Take me. I don't even want to live on planet Earth no more. Anyways, moving right along. Um, Who else? So, yeah, we got Phaedra, Eva, Taylor Armstrong, Brandy, Tamara, Vicky. Um, So, yeah, we talked about them. Brandy, I don't like Brandy. She's a thirst bucket. She's thirsty, 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 thirsty. And I thought that you know, Tamara was going to be the one that's really obsessed with the housewives, this whole world of housewives. Because she literally hosts a podcast with Thirsty Teddy Mellencamp about the housewives. But no, it's really Brandy Glanville who's obsessed with the housewives. Like, you can tell that she still wants to be a part of the franchise and that the franchise is her whole entire life. It's her entire personality being a housewife. Um, in the very beginning, we get the scene with Brandy's son. And it just kind of reminded me of how... Um, she put her son on Instagram and the son was basically pleading the case for Brandy Glanville to get her job back on uh, Beverly Hills. He was like, Andy Cohen, please give my mom her job back. Please give my mom her job back. Who in their right mind has their son? Who pimps out their son for John Legend tickets? Who pimps out their son for a job? It was quite disgusting, if you ask me. Using your child to get your job. Girl, girl. That child don't want to be in that situation. A child is just supposed to be a child. If you're having troubles finding a job, you don't go to the child and be like, listen, son, I'm having... Like, no, you make it work. As a parent, you make it work. 
I never knew. I never knew when my parents were broke. And I never, well, mm, I never, I'm just going to go ahead and say, I never knew when my parents were broke and I never knew if they were struggling because as parents, like they let the children be the children and the parents figure it out as the adults. Okay. Anyways, um, uh, Taylor is remarried. Um, if you guys don't know, just to give y'all some background information on her situation. Remember, Taylor Armstrong from Beverly Hills was married to a gentleman by the name of Russell. Russell was extremely abusive and allegedly broke her jaw and gave her black eyes. They had like this whole violent relationship where he was beating up on the girl, right? Um, soon after it was revealed that Russell was beating up on sis, Russell committed suicide, unfortunately. And um, it was like this whole deep, dark thing on Beverly Hills season two. Go back and watch if you want to know more about it. Um, and then we know Eva and Phaedra, right? This whole episode, really the only reason why I've been so in love with um, these shows, the fran this franchise, Ultimate Girls Trip, is because I love to see the Atlanta ladies outside of their element. I really did not like Eva on her seasons of... Um, Atlanta, however, I'm really liking her in this first episode of Ultimate Girls Trip. So I feel like Phaedra and Eva, just off rip, they are my favorite cast members on this show because they're black and they're from Atlanta. And I'm black and I'm from Atlanta. So listen, we, 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 we see each other. So anyways, everybody makes it to the Bluestone Manor. Jill Zarin is, uh, is a surprise housewife. So she's going to show up in the second day, the second episode. Uh, but they all show up. And, um, you know, they take a tour. Vicky's being rude. She's like, oh, my God, this is creepy. Oh, my God, I hate the decor. Oh, my God, I hate the chandelier. Oh, my God, I hate my life. Oh, my God, I hate my fiance is what she really should be saying. We meet Marco, the concierge, um, on uh, the way to the manor. Phaedra and um, uh, Eva are in the car. And Phaedra goes, well, Kenya told me about Brandy Glanville. And she told me that, you know, Brandy Glanville is crazy now. She was warning me about her. And I wasn't surprised at the fact that Kenya Moore said that Brandy Glanville is crazy, which she is. I was more so shook at the fact that Kenya and Phaedra are talking, that Kendra, Kendra, Kenya and Phaedra are friends. I was like, oh my God, pigs are flying. Hell has frozen over. It is snowing in Pasadena. Okay, Kenya and Phaedra are actually friends. Won't he do it? Okay, speaking of uh, Phaedra and Kenya being friends, some Atlanta tea. Um, tell me why Candy Burris Tucker just posted a birthday post dedicated to Portia, Portia, Portia. Jesus is fixing it, child. Okay, amen, amen. Um, but no. So I thought that was interesting. But then, yeah, Eva and Phaedra are the last ones to arrive. Everyone is viewing this very eccentric mansion in the Berkshires, darling. So here's the tea. Here, here's the sitch. Brandy and Taylor don't really get along because on the second season of Beverly Hills, um, remember, Russell, Taylor Armstrong's husband, died. Taylor, for the life of her, could not understand why, um, or Brandy for the life of her, could not understand why Taylor would decide to continue on and do reality television and write a book about her husband's death soon after her uh, husband's death. She infamously said at the reunion, it's only been a hot minute and you already wrote a book. Seems very sus to me. So Brandy and Taylor don't get along. Brandy and Tamara also don't get along because uh, at one point in time, Tamara called um, Brandy unstable. What she really said was that Kelly Dodd from OC, Miss Maga, is unstable. And then she compared her to Brandy Glanville. So the whole statement was, Kelly Dodd is unstable. She's like Brandy Glanville. So she didn't directly call Brandy Glanville unstable, but she kind of used Brandy Glanville in a simile. She's unstable like Brandy Glanville. Okay, that's a simile, a comparison using like her ass. So all in all, Tamara did call the girl unstable. And then Tamara, um, or Brandy, excuse me, ended up calling Tamara a sociopath and started talking about her broke truth, her cheating truth. Eva meets Vicky. 
Now, Eva has done a lot of great housewives homework, and she understands and knows that Vicky is the OG of the OC. And Vicky really is the OG of all of the housewives. She is like the original housewife. Vicky started it for all these girls, right? And Eva's, uh, you know, when she meets Vicky, she's like, thank you, Vicky, for giving me a job. Thank you, Vicky, for inducting me into the housewife space. You made this possible for all of us here today. We appreciate everything that you've sacrificed to get us to where we are. And then Vicky in the confessional goes, who is this woman? Who, who, Eva who? Vicky ain't never seen an episode of Top Model in her life. Vicky ain't ever seen an episode of uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta in her life. You know she don't watch the black franchises. Anyways. Um, so yeah, Eva knows Vicky. Vicky doesn't know Eva. Child, there are sirens happening outside the damn window. Okay. My name's on the list. Nene's isn't. Anyways, Brandy and Tamara have a little bit of time to talk about their online feud. Tamara basically denies the fact that uh, she called Brandy unstable, which she did. So Tamara kind of lied in that instance, or maybe she just doesn't remember. Uh, Brandy takes, uh, you know, the olive branch and then they hug it out and they're going to get along for now. Then Brandy also takes uh, Taylor Armstrong to the side and they talk about their situation. Brandy is still confused at the fact as to why. Taylor Armstrong decided to get on TV and write a book after her husband's passing. But any human being with two brain cells would understand that everyone grieves differently and everyone behaves differently and everyone processes life and life's traumas differently. If Brandy would put the bottle down, if she would put the champagne down, if she would put the wine down, and don't let me get into the hard liquor then she could maybe process the fact that people grieve differently, right? So then they have their first dinner. Brandy is drunk as hell, okay? Brandy brings up Russell, the dead husband of Taylor Armstrong, again. Taylor says, if you must know the reason why I wrote a book, well, let's back it up. She said, if you must know, the reason why I continued on with uh, reality TV is because... I felt like if my life was in front of the cameras, then I would be more protected from my abusive husband. If my husband knew that people were watching him, okay, their eyes were watching God, because didn't she go through an, an abusive marriage? Hmm. Um, if my husband knew that people were watching him, he would probably behave and keep his hands off me, right? Secondly, after he passed, I wrote the book because I didn't have no money. He was the breadwinner. I was just a housewife. I was just the arm candy, right? He hid all the money away from me. I don't know where the money is. I had to make a living. I had to feed myself and feed my child. Therefore, I agree that if I wrote the book before the reunion, I would receive it in advance so that I could eat and clothe myself. Brandy Glanville still doesn't understand that situation. And she relates it back to herself talking about some, well, that was the worst year of my life too. And Russell was a good friend of mine, too. And I was very sad about the situation, too. And I was broke, too. Child, Brandy is telling her own broke truth. And then Vicky goes, what does that have to do with anything, Brandy? And then Brandy tells Vicky to shut the F up. It's definitely giving Ramona. You can tell that uh, Brandy Glanville is the new Ramona of Ultimate Girls Trip 2. Um, in the same way that uh, Ramona told Kenya Moore hair care to shut the F up on the PJ. Same sort of situation, but now we're in the Berkshires. Um, honestly, that moment seemed very fake. It seemed produced. It seems like Brandy Glanville's producer told her to do that. So y'all let me know. Let me know if you guys are going to tune into the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip 2. I love it so far, and I'm going to go ahead and catch up on the uh, second and third episode. Let me know how y'all feel about the situation. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to create a great day.